Hello, my name is Mark, and today I'm going to walk you through how to set up Azure Site Recovery, which is part of the Microsoft Operations Management Suite. The beauty of the ASR solution is that it's actually really easy to set up. We have to create a network in Azure so the VMs have a network to communicate with. We have to set up a storage account, that's a place to put the VMs. And we have to prepare the Hyper-V hosts to actually send the data up to Azure. As far as prerequisites go, the core ones are that you must have Hyper-V Server 2012 R2 or greater, 2016 works as well of course, uh, and the required access, either directly or through proxy. If you want, you can look in the URL at the bottom left hand corner here and has a detailed explanation of all the prerequisites. And there are a couple of things to be aware of. Individual disk capacity on any one VM cannot exceed 1023 gigabytes or one terabyte. Virtual machines cannot have more than 64 disks. Shared disk clusters are not supported. VMs with NIC teaming, well, they're converted to a single NIC. And Linux VMs with static IP addresses are not supported. Linux VMs with dynamic addresses are supported. The first step we're going to take is to create the network for the virtual machines when they exist in Azure when they need. So log into the Azure portal, go to the dashboard, then go down here and select virtual networks. Click on add and we're going to fill in the name and address space for our virtual network. So my taxonomy uh, is that, or my naming convention is that I use 16 dash to identify um, pieces that belong to me or belong to this project. The address space we're going to use is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Remember you can use any network address space you want. You should really think of Azure as an extension of your existing data center. The subnet name is going to be called 16-ASR uh, servers. Okay, and then 192.168.0.0 slash 26. I'm going to create this as a subnet. All right, uh, that's the name of my subscription. The resource group I'm going to use is the my resource group is called System Center. There's a number of people using this environment, so System Center Demo RG, and the location I'm going to create it in is West US. So I'm going to go create. This takes anywhere from about 15 to 20 seconds to actually create the network. You can monitor the progress by looking on the notifications tab over here, and you're going to see deployment started. Uh, it's actually pretty much done at this point. Deployment succeeded. We'll click a refresh up here, and we'll see our 16 ASR demo network has been created. Now we're going to create the storage account for this ASR environment. So let's close the notifications blade, return to the Azure dashboard, click on storage accounts, and click on add. Here we're going to fill out the name and information location of the ASR storage account. So 16 ASR demo. Note this resource can't be named with uh, using either capitals or special characters. So 16 and then all small letters in my case. Uh, I'm going to select premium disk because these are virtual machines. I want them to run quickly. And I'm going to choose uh, which in this case is called System Center Demo Resource Group. And the location I'm going to put it in is West US. All the resources I create for this ASR environment have to be created in the same physical location. So in this case, they're all going to be in West US. Click on Create. You can click on the Notifications tab up here to watch what's happening. And you'll see deployment started. Actually, that took about a minute to build. But anyway, here we go, 16 ASR demo. Next, we're going to actually create the Recovery Services Vault. So click on Microsoft Azure in the top left-hand corner to return us to the dashboard. Select Recovery Service Vaults from here. And then click on Add. Now note, this particular resource cannot contain special characters, so we're going to call it Demo ASR 16. From a resource group perspective, we're going to use our standard System Center one. System Center Demo RG, and the location is West US. Note that all the resources tied to the Recovery Services Vault have to be in the same location. Click on Create. You'll 
you'll notice the deployment started, gets going, and a few seconds later, it'll show up as completed. If we click on the Notifications tab, you'll see Deployment Succeeded. Back over here and click Refresh, and we'll see Demo ASR16. So let's click on that and get started with configuring our Vault. I'm going to close the Notifications tab here. So click on this to open the Vault, or this Vault. And once the blade opens, you'll see a place called Getting Started. Under Getting Started, we're going to click on Site Recovery. This is going to get into three steps. The first one is to prepare infrastructure, so let's do that. Set your protection goal to Azure or to a recovery site. Well, we're failing over from an on-premise location to Azure, although you can use this tool to fail over between two on-premise sites, right? two data centers. Are your machines virtualized? Yes, with Hyper-V. And are you using System Center Virtual Machine Manager to manage your virtual hosts? No, I'm using just the plain Hyper-V. If I was to look at the options here, I could choose v VMware vSphere or a bare metal system. Click OK. Prepare the source. So here we're going to have to define the Hyper-V site. A Hyper-V site is just a container that holds all the hosts that hold the VMs you're actually going to fail into Azure or back up to Azure. And we're going to call this one 16-ASR demo site. OK. That takes about 15 to 20 seconds to complete. And now we're going to actually go to step two and add a Hyper-V server. So you'll notice I've actually moved the Azure portal and I'm running it from an RDP session on my host. And the reason for that is it's just easy to download the agent and download the key. So we're running 2012R2, yes. Proxy settings are done, yes. In fact, we're not using a proxy in this particular instance. Uh, download the installer, so click on this guy and say save. And then download the registration key. And say save. Okay, that's completed, so let's open the folder. And here's the agent, the recovery service provider agent for the host. So we'll get that running. And it's going to ask us for the key file. So we're going to browse. And I'll just make sure I put that. I put it in the downloads directory. Okay, close that off. Go back up here. Click on downloads. And there's my key file. Open that. And it's going to populate with all the information you need to register this device with or this host with Azure. Click on next. Uh, connect directly to the Azure Site Recovery without a proxy. That's our situation here. Let's close this. Whoops. Thank you for that. Click Next. Note the install the agent actually takes a bit of time, but I already installed it once when I was prepping for this demo, so it went very quickly. But it takes about uh, a minute to go through that. Communications done, initializing with registration. Excellent, done. Register with Recovery Vault. Back to the Azure portal. Okay. So now's a good time to go for a quick coffee break. You'll notice here it says adding a Hyper-V server may take one minute to 30 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video for the moment, and when it's registered, I will come back and we'll continue. Once the server is registered and shows up under the prepared source blade, click OK. This takes us down to the target prepare. So validate the subscription, that's what we're using. Select the resource deployment model to use. So in this case, the resource manager, we're going to go, we're, not, we're never using classic, we're always using resource manager. Check the compatible storage account exists. Great. Yes, we already did that. And one virtual network exists. Excellent. So we're going to click OK. And replication settings. So in this
this case, we're going to click on Create and Associate. Right? There is no replication policy in place today, so that's what we're going to do now. The policy now is called the 16-ASR REPL policy. go to give you header B copy frequency 15, 15 minutes I don't think we need it that frequency for this but we're going to leave it 15 minutes it's just going to take the deltas after the initial copy recovery point in hours two that's great an app consistent snapshot frequency in hours every hour sure why not uh, initial replication start immediately okay up here you'll see creating replication policy click on the actual notifications tab to watch it build here. This takes about a minute to complete and you can see the association and the creation of the replication policy are done. So we'll close the notification blade and click OK here. You notice we've got successfully created replication policy and successfully associated to the replication policy. Finally, step five. Set recovery performs optimally on sufficient network bandwidth and storage are provisioned. Let's just grow the screen a bit. It got a bit small there. There we go. Download and uh, select the capacity planner. Well, I know the capacity of these VMs is pretty small, so I'm not going to go through this process right now. It is a useful tool to go through, and perhaps I'll make another video showing how that tool works. Click OK. Click OK again. Now I've finished step one. We'll go on to step two. So for step two, replicate application. Configure the source. Remember we set up the site. So here's the site name. We've only got one site, ASR demo site. But if you had multiple sites containing multiple hosts, this is how you would choose them. Click OK. Target configure. Subscription is right. Uh, the resource group, yes. That's a system, my, my resource group, System Center Demo RG. Uh, resource manager, everything we're doing again is resource manager, nothing happening in classic mode. The storage account. So under storage account, you actually have a couple of options here. You could create new. Remember, we created it beforehand because I like to have all my things in place, all my infrastructure in place before I actually go ahead and, uh, and build the storage vault. So we've chosen 16 ASR 16 SC demo. And here we go to the post failover Azure account. So when it fails over which uh, Azure network, sorry, are we going to use? And that's my 16 ASR demo network. Again, same thing. I could create this network on the fly on demand, but I like having it built ahead of time. Okay, and then the subnet, obviously we've got one subnet, which is the 16 ASR service subnet. So click OK on this guy. And here, when that registration process occurs, it actually identifies which servers exist on the hosts in that Hyper-V, in the Hyper-V site. So in this case, I'm just going to start off by replicating my AD server only and click OK. All right, so I've just run into a small problem. My AD server is called AD space server, and it turns out, according to the message here, that virtual machine names cannot contain spaces or special characters. So I'm going to go and rename that machine and wait for the, uh, the host to update the recovery vault with the new name, and we'll try it again. Okay, that was remarkably quick. About five minutes total. In fact, the AD server was the name that I'd given this machine in the Hyper-V manager and not the name of the actual server itself. So just good to know that. Anyway, I'm going to select AD server now. Click OK. So configure properties. So for AD server, the OS type, Windows. All right. Per VM, 25 gigs. Disk to replicate. That's based on the size of the VM itself. And we can click OK. So here we go, replication settings. These are the, remember we defined these a little bit earlier using this policy. If we wanted to use a different policy, if we had to find a different policy, we could select it here. Obviously we just have the one right now. So we're gonna click OK. And enable replication. 
look up in the corner here, maybe we'll click on the notifications, and we can see enabling protection. The operation is in progress. And it's running. So I'm going to pause the video here, and we'll come back when it's finished replicating. Just looking at the timestamp here, you can see that enabling protection was finished in about two to three minutes. Now let's check and see what the status of our job is. So first let's click on jobs and we'll look at site recovery jobs. And we can see everything that we did to actually create this here, everything's successful. So we'll close that. Uh, we'll close the notifications tab at the same time. And we're going to go down to uh, replicated items here. And under replicated items, we're going to see the AD server, health is OK, and quite importantly, we're going to see it's 1% synchronized so far. So I'm going to put this on hold again until we've got fully synchronized. We'll come back. So I've come back a couple hours later, and you can see that the AD server is now fully protected. So that completes our setup of the Azure Site Recovery. In the next video, I'm going to cover off the uh, Azure failover. There are a couple of learnings I've had. I'll just give you a heads up in case you go ahead and try this before you, uh, before you see the video. Understand the types of failover and their respective outcomes. Absolutely. Make sure you install the agent, the VM agent, on, uh, on your source machine. Make sure you enable remote desktop and you enable the remote desktop rules in the firewall for all profiles. And if you have a problem, you can't connect to the machine, whatever it is, don't delete the Azure VM until after you've removed protection from the source VM. You won't be able to start up the VM on-premise if you don't do that. Uh, so just don't delete it until after you've removed protection from the source VM. Thanks for watching.